what the session is going to be about and he's going to go through all the slides then in the end we are going to be taking up questions as per the questions you can uh, uh, the preferable way of asking questions would be you just type in your questions in the chat window uh, where everyone can see the questions and then radhe will just go through the each and every question and answer those questions uh, so radhe you can take over okay thanks adul so am i audible clearly hello yes radhe you are audible yes okay great okay let me share my screen Yes, Pradeep. We can see your uh, the first slide. You can continue. <clears throat> Hello. Yes, Pradeep. We can hear you. You can continue. Okay. Sure. Sure. Great. Okay. So. <clears throat> so today we're going to discuss about the app test cpq right basically how the cpq works in salesforce and what are the benefits uh, of this cpq over another uh, configure pressing code software right so uh, give me one second uh, i think something is going on Give me one second, Atul. Sure. Okay. So, Atul, could you please narrate all the things about Salesforce Saturday? Yeah, sure. So guys, as as you know, as you a lot of you know already know about Salesforce Saturday. So Salesforce Saturday was started by Stephanie Herrera. Uh, she is a Salesforce MVP. She started at uh, in Austin, Texas. Uh, she was uh, also not pretty recently. Uh, this is a, a little older slide. Uh, interviewed by Button Click Admin. You can check out that podcast where she talks about uh, everything and anything about Salesforce Saturday and what exactly they they do at. these events so if giving you a idea uh, salesforce saturday is kind of an informal event uh, which is organized almost every week in austin uh, we and people meet up in a starbucks or a or a or a coffee shop and they discuss about anything and everything related to salesforce uh, in india uh, you know we started the salesforce saturday as an online thing because meeting every week Uh, becomes a little difficult in uh, Delhi NCR area because it's quite spread out. But yeah, we definitely meet offline as well as part of our uh, uh, Trailhead challenge called Race for Trailhead, and we definitely have one uh, that is going to be on twenty eighth October. I'll tell you more about it at the end of the session. All right, Radhe, you can take it from here. Okay, sure. Thanks. Okay, uh, yeah, we have gone through this. So this is a little thing about me. So I'm a test professional Salesforce developer working in Salesforce industry since last three years, and uh, uh, working active, uh, active. I'm active on Salesforce Success Community and uh, blogging on LetsAppTest.com. You can visit, right? And you can follow me on uh, Twitter and ask any query on Twitter or Shyam at the SFTG, right? So this is a uh, little thing about me. So. Okay, some chat message coming out. Let me read. 
so am i audible to everyone yes radha you are audible yeah. you can continue with the session okay okay great great so uh, this slide tells you about the quotation and the and the billing and the revenue and all the things cover the aptus is covering all the things so if we talk about the qtc part aptus go to cash solution include configure pricing and quotation right it has it customized all the uh, it has customized software as per the business requirement which is uh, highly adaptive adaptive and adaptable by uh, the uh, the business and the different clients right so it include the different contract management e commerce the billing management the revenue recognition management so all the things are in one place so you can you can uh, the customer or the client can get the solution of each and everything on a single place right so this is the little uh, description about this aptus company you can visit the site also i have mentioned the link so today we will discuss basically on the part how it technically works in uh, salesforce org and how you how you will get it and how you install it in system and what are the different product model the pricing models and how we will get configured we are going to get configured in system right from scratch and how to define the catalogs see the part of the aptus cpq and then after we will run the complete cpq cycle for code uh, for cpq cycle for code generation for customers right <clears throat> okay let's start with uh if my speed is too fast so you can you can stop me right okay let's start with how it works basically so you yeah, you all are salesforce guys you know the sales cycle of salesforce right so initially its campaign happens and then lead leads get generated then it get converted into the account opportunity and contacts right so then quotation quotation has been created if you talk about the standard salesforce uh, cpq right so quotes get generated and the different uh, product line item get generated which are synced with the opportunity and in this way the complete flow runs on right so where aptus comes into the picture right so once you have your account in salesforce right and you have opportunity right so from opportunity you will create aptus provide you the uh, its own customized code proposal creation a uh, creation feature right so right from the opportunity you will get uh, the buttons or some links to create your code proposal in aptus right so if you see here there is the part of salesforce account and opportunity these are standard objects in salesforce right and these are the some objects uh, in aptus on the top level i have mentioned some objects here so when it got proposed and the orders and order line items proposal line items so how it works so initially we have account we have opportunity from opportunity we generally used to create a code right so we are not uh, talking about uh, regarding aptus uh, sorry salesforce standard code now so we are talking about the aptus code so from opportunity you will get a button on layout once you install on the package in system right you will get a button enabled on opportunity layout there you will start your code uh, code creation for uh, in aptus uh, cpq right when you hit the button it will redirect you to the entire aptus system right so where you will create the code you will uh, you will select the products you will apply the discount and all the things right so we will finally you will uh, create the some proposal line item after discounting each and all uh, all kind of discount adjustment right so your proposal line items will get created right so once your proposal line item get created they will have certain uh, certain uh, pricing and amounts like uh, opportunity line items right so once all the all the line items get created under proposal it will back sync into the salesforce so this is the simple cycle right so okay so and how this order come into the picture so let's say you have created a code right and you are sending it to your customer if your customer accept this code okay uh, this is fine for me and pricing are means uh, uh, pricing are accurate or as per the as per their requirement so they will accept your code and it will get converted into the order right 
so court proposal is one of the custom object in actors and another is order is the custom object in uh, actors right so under order there are certain order line items as per the products you have selected each product or each services you are selecting in your catalog or in your cart will get converted into the line item so it depends what kind of line item if it is under order then it will be order line item if it is under court proposal it will be the proposal line item right so from order yes the customer has accepted your code then it will become an order and uh, once the order is activated means activated means the order has been activated and the billing gets started right once the order is activated the order line item get converted into the asset line item for that particular account for which you are creating all the things and all the code and quotation and order on that right so the salesforce was contain this account opportunity contact the actors part contains the code proposal proposal line item and all the order asset line item all the stuff right so in this way it, this is the high level uh, uh, high level design that i have designed here on this ppt so we will get uh, get into the dig after some slides right so this is the high level uh, architecture that generally actors follow right there are lots of certain things that uh, multiple custom object running behind these right so this is the internal part of this calculation and this uh, cpq cycle right okay so moving forward let's uh, let's try to okay how it works now how to get after cpq package so you have, let's say <clears throat> you have your dev work right and yes you can install the after packages in your dev work but uh, these are for uh, 30 days trial right so from where you can get these packages if you want to learn the specific and you want to hands on the uh, hands on this specific right so let's see the first thing you can get directly from the app exchange you can search here aptus you will get uh, you can search the app as aptus you can get all the aptus packages like aptus contract aptus x author cpq and billing and all that right so some of the packages some of the features are still not available on on app exchange so from where you will get the second option is you can get them from uh, its aptus community portal right so for that you have to uh, you have to pay something to aptus then you will get the access kind of license then you will you will get the list of complete packages you can see it right so i have access for all most of the features cpq x author billing rewrack docker sign integration and all kind of uh, packages you can see right so you can go go there and directly install in your a dev or sandbox or production uh, as per your requirement right okay okay so moving forward so basically if we try to understand the aptus cpq there are uh, basically two different models one is uh, one is uh, let's say the product model right how you are going to set up the products and how the services that you want to sell out to your customer right so first thing that you need to set up in your system right if you talk about the aptus cpq yes aptus cpq have done some customization with with standard salesforce product object and make it available for the users for aptus cpq right so there are lots of fields a lots of uh, kind of custom fields aptus has created and re uh, reinvent this particular product object uh, uh, for aptus cpq right so let's uh, let's see some some uh, some terminologies in uh, if we talk about the product setup so it consists some products some option groups some options what is this let's let's uh, let me explain so product is something the survey product is some something that service or the product that a, a company want to sell out to its customer right so if you if you are selling something you have to set up in the system right so option group is defined by actors let's say you have multiple products set up in system then you want to create a particular group okay this this but this particular product will comes under this particular group abc right then then option yes this is the option of that particular group yeah in this way you can you can define the products in system and second thing is the attributes 
attributes and attribute attribute groups yes so after cpq you have uh, a most beautiful feature called asset attribute based configuration right so attribute something like that uh, if you are uh, selling some products like uh, if we take a simple example like television right so the television screen uh, so there's some there is some attribute like television screen size or television color or television brand so these are some attributes that we can select on the when we are configuring our product or uh, we are configuring our quotation for the customer so these are some part that we we generally use to set up while uh, we are setting the products in system right so this is uh, this is a, a top level a description of the product how the things are uh, running if you are setting setting up the products there are certain attributes groups and there are some attribute values right so there are lots of custom object defined and system to set up this okay so then product and option group and options yeah okay so this is this is the top level view of the product and let's move move ahead and check how the pricing works in system right and yeah during product setup uh, once you install all the packages you will get this tab called cpq console where you can see the the product related links uh, directly you can set up the products the product manage products and and all that right so you have to navigate on the cpq console where you will get all the apps related stuff the links the shortcuts on a single page right okay let's let's see how the pricing model works in this system right so once you have set up the products in system right now you have to set up the pricing the pricing for those particular products right to sell out in a, uh, to get the revenue basically right so there are some terminology related to price in after cpq if we talk about the pricing setup right so first thing is price list this is equivalent to the price book in salesforce then price list item uh, it's like a price book entries you can you can correlate the things then second thing is price rule set we have we can define the different price rule set on based on some condition on some pricing right so let's say pricing is x then we can we can change it or uh, we can change it uh, uh, while we are while we are configuring the things in after system right or we are applying the adjustment the price rule sets will get fired as per the rules you have this, uh, you have defined in the system right so moving into the complex pricing we have some features like price matrix and price matrix entry so price matrix are basically provide the conditional based conditional base pricing so for example if you want to sell out same product on different prices to the different customer right so based on the customer you will define some pricing in price matrices and that price matrix will get get accessed from by actors engine while you are configuring your cart and you are adjusting the amount in your cart right yeah so this is all about the pricing model so these are terminology once you get into the system and you will uh, do the hands on you will get the better idea of these these are basically these are all the custom objects in after system if you look into the deep clo closely you will get the ideas right okay this is about the pricing setup okay let's and again if you again if you want to uh if you want to set up the pricing the pricing management is also the section there on cpq console from where you can add the pricing you can manage the price list price rule set you can you can define all the pricing related stuff here right for the particular products that you have in system already right okay now the next thing the catalogs right 
so because and and user customer will come into the system and uh, he will expect that a, a well categorized and well defined catalog uh, in the system so from where he or she can choose or pick the right product right so it should be in hierarchy level so we have to define some hierarchies or we can say the categories of your products so uh, on this slide i have clearly mentioned that let's say vodafone is the uh, is the company who is selling your, their product and uh, we have categorized in prepaid postpaid and further we have sub categorized this like internet packs and recharge packs right so in this way you can get a clear picture that what what kind of service or product coming into the which kind of hierarchy right so it will make the customer easier to pick uh, their product uh, to pick the things in system in right way right so there is no kind of jumble and all the things right so this this is the, the this is the most important thing that how you can display your products in to your customer because this is this is your front end that uh, end user is uh, is seeing in your system right so that should be well defined and well managed right so this is these are categories will will show you how to define the categories in system. okay moving next the complete cpq cycle a cpq cycle okay we had talked lot, lot about this uh, cpq stuff and uh, let's start with the practical things in system okay let me share my screen Okay, uh, are you able to see my browser, the code 001? Atul, are you there? Yes, I can. Okay, great. So uh, let me explain some things uh, that I have discussed on the PPT. Let me talk about the product setup, how to navigate on the product setup and all the section, right? So it, as I told that there is a CPQ console tab Okay, before that, if uh, once you have installed your CPQ packages, you will get listed all the applications here, right? Your contract management, proposal, batch, and billing, invoice, and all that, right? So one of them is Aptus product setup. So, so once once you uh, click on the product setup, you will get, uh, get this application on, and all the related tab will get listed here. So let's move on product CPQ product console, right? So this is the console that uh, I was discussing about. And uh, you can see here the product section here, the pricing, the rule management, there are different kind of business rules we can define system. And uh, the product, let's say uh, you want to set up a product. Basically, I think I have certain product in system. Okay, basically this is navigating to the standard Salesforce uh, product uh, object. And uh, I have certain product. Let me show you. Okay. So from CPK console, I clicked on add product and you will get this window. You can define your product or services as per your requirement. And uh, you just uh, attach an icon as well. So some of the fields are mandatory here, right? So your product should be active. There should be product code to uniquely identify it. And you should define your product family because later on we have a certain pricing rules that we need to calculate. So we will do that based on this product family, right? So this is the configuration type of that particular product, right? So your configuration type, the type of product, this is standalone and selling out this standalone. If it is a bundle and certain option under this product, then I will define it as a bundle, right? 
so this is all together uh, can be a different session that we can dig into look into this uh, product setup and the explanation of all the fields right okay this is the product your basic fields you can fill it out right <clears throat> then if you talk about the if we talk about the pricing section uh, pricing section that add price list then add price list tool let's add the pricing under it right let me add sample pricing here again so let me define the price list before setting up the price list item you have to define the price list in the system right so i have defined the price list standard price list the product is this the charge time let's say standard price and this will be one time you are paying the amount for this product only one time and let's say this is uh, 750 right so in this way these are some fields uh, uh, that relate with a different kind of functionality some of them are billing taxation field finance revenue and all that so these are some basic field that we can we can fill in here and uh, we can activate our price list right so now if you see here you have two price for this particular product one is 750 one is 499 right this i have defined already right so in this way you can define your product simple you can define your pricing right so i was talking about the price list okay so price list equivalent to the price book in salesforce right so before creating any price list item price list item is a, uh, uh, is a uh, child object if you talk about the salesforce term the child object of that standard price list right so every price list you are creating for your product right so it will be it will be associated to its uh, parent right price list so price list generally contains all the entries for its price list item for all the products right so how to create the price list simply go and define the price list in system right let's say this is for usa reason right and i'm just simply define price list for what date from when to when it will be effective you can mention the uh, dates right so this is the contract number if this price list is related to some specific contract or customer you can mention it here contract number right so right now i'm mentioning only active are activating this price list by filling up the name right so this is the price list you can create here and moving forward when you will create the new product you can you can add this price list in these particular products right so this is this this is the way how you can define the price list in system right okay let me add this price list and this particular with this particular product okay so earlier i have selected the standard price list item now i will going to select usd price list item for this price list i'm going to select usd price list so all the entries of this price list will be under this usd price list right you can define the charge types the charge type is something that how you are charging a customer this is kind of license fees or this is your uh, this product having some subscription fees or installation fees right like like we have we get installed the uh, ac in our offices that kind of fees will be installation fees right and it will be installation fees always one time usually so it will be one time price method the per unit right so in this way you can define the pricing right simply okay coming back to the cpq console right so we can add the product simply just click on that and fill the some uh, mandatory entry and uh, just save it then add the price list 
create the new price list and create then price list item for the particular product to link uh, with the pricing and to populate the pricing for these particular products. Then next thing is to add the categories, right? So as I shown the example of Vodafone, right? So what we can do, we can define different categories in system, right? If I open this, there is a entry here, Vodafone India. Category name where I have added subcategories, right? These all are the custom objects basically. And if we check the hierarchy level, how these are managed in system, right? So you can see that clearly Vodafone India, then it has subcategory called prepared. It having some prepared, having prepared and postpaid. Prepared also has subcategories, right? And sub two subcategories and each subcategory having one or two products inside it, right? So once, if you want to add product, if you want to add more subcategories here, just go ahead and add subcategories. Okay, if you have associated product, you cannot add. Okay, I am just adding subcategory with this. What a phone India. Let's see. This is not at the right place. Okay, leave it. Okay, then again, if just go ahead and add, right? Just save it. So in this way, you can define the categories, and and at last, you can add the product in this sub 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 and subcategory, right? Just pick any of the product and associate it with it. Right. So you have you have what of under what of an USA you have category two where you have one product in system, right? Just save it. So guys, this is the category view in which way we can define the categories and that will be visible in our catalog once we will uh, configure the uh, cart and all that, right? So the most important thing here, one is that if you are making certain changes in category and you are defining the products and all that, the thing is that you have to run some batch of that will commit the changes in system, right? So after I have provided this particular separate application for the all these tab with all these tabs where you can define, uh, you can run all these jobs. Basically, these are basically batch jobs, and you can execute them. Let's say I have made changes in hierarchy view, right? So I need to update this. Then it will reflect in my system when I will go for use it, right? So you have to update all kind of, you have to run all the maintenance jobs in which you are making any changes. Like for hierarchy, for category changes, I made this and I'm going to update this, okay? Then second is the criteria maintenance. If you have written some conditional base pricing or you had defined some pricing just update it right so in similar way if you are defining some more constraint rule or business you are writing just go ahead and update all the views here or uh, just execute this batch right so this was uh, so, sorry sorry to interrupt i had one question so uh... Uh, does it support like I have some add-on or uh, some uh, additional product that is uh, not sold separately, but uh, just with the cat to let's say you are defined with this product, I want to sell some add-on. So is there something uh, we can define like some associated product that is not separately offered? Mm -hmm. So you are asking that if you are, if you are, if you are selling product A, then you want to offer product B or C, right? Like that. Yeah, uh, let's say from uh, from the screen selection itself, there is one attribute of type product. I define. Yeah, sorry, sorry and guys. Uh, uh, is yeah. So Yogesh, uh, we are gonna be asking questions at the end of the session. So if you can maybe oh, write down your question. No, no worries, no worries. Uh, if you can write down your question or just put it in the chat window, 
and we can go through those uh, questions one by one at the end of the session. Yeah, sure. All right. Okay, Radhi, you can continue. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Okay, sure. So in this way, you can define uh, the category. The category is here, and you can uh, you you have to run some batch jobs to change uh, to save these changes in system, right? So then only it will reflect on the actual system when you will go and pick the products in your uh, CPG cycle, right? While configuring the products, right? So this was about the. So this was about the defining the products and the pricing using price list and the categories, right? So these are some basic things and let's, okay, all things are set now. Let me run a CPQ cycle here from scratch. Okay. Initially, let me create an account, sample account. So I'm just creating an opportunity for it. Right, it will do it in future, let's say 31st. Okay, so okay. okay. this uh, account and opportunity are self standard objects that I have created. Now you are able to see this create proposal, code create proposal button here, right? So this is enabled once I install all the CPQ package or related CPQ package in my system, right? So from here, it will it will uh, uh, navigate to in after system, right? So if you see the URL, the uh, URL, right? So I'm uh, selecting the record type and trying to create a draft version of this particular code proposal, right? So I'm just taking, you have to select the, so these are some basic fields which should, which are mandatory here. So on page layout level, you have to make this mandatory or right. So the price list you have to select with your particular code. Okay. So what is the importance of this? So let's say you are, you are creating a quotation from your Indian customer, right? So that Indian customer needs separate pricing, right? It, it, uh, these pricing will be in a, uh, uh, INR, right? So you have to create an INR price list in system, first of all. Then you have to define the products and their pricing as per this INR price list, right? Then when the customer is going to create this uh, code, then he or she have to select this INR price list, right? So basically this price list controls the visibility of your catalog as well, right? So let's say if you have, you have defined your catalog in a, a USD price list and you are you are uh, you are putting here the standard price list or something else then you want to be able to see the catalog inside this right you will not see it you will not be able to see any product defined in in USD because you are Indian customer and you are selecting the INR price list make sense okay so I'm just uh, selecting this standard price list here then this is the default then let's say this is the this order going to be expected start date today and end with the, after one year. Okay. So I'm not going to activate the orders and all that. Ready to present, ready to generate in this of this. So valid until date, valid until is something like uh, we are providing these pricing for our products that would be valid for one month only. After that, after that, you have to create another separate contract. Right? Okay. right, guys. So these are some fields that uh, this is a total fields that generally uh, contains the totals of all the products. Right now we don't have configured this and don't we didn't edit any of the product in it. So 
so here one section is there for action buttons right so we have some buttons here one is configure product is visible here that will help us to pick up the right products and will select the options right and one one button here is for preview purpose what we have selected we, we can see on our pdf format right so another some buttons are disabled they will uh, they will get enabled once the approval stage this is the stage of the of this code right initially it comes into the draft mode when we initially create the product uh, sorry in, initially create the draft code it is in the draft mode and you will only able to see this but particular button right here so either state changes right you will get uh, the button get enables and you can perform the action on right okay so i'm just going to add some product let me hit on this configure product button So here we have, uh, these are the catalogs that category we have defined in backend using CPQ console, right? So one is Vodafone India, it consists prepaid, postpaid plans. And this is default favorite. You can enable or disable it. You can save basically your favorite configuration here. Every time you don't need to configure all the things you will see here once you save the favorite, right? So these are the Vodafone India, which consists prepaid and postpaid. Let me go ahead and click on this Vodafone India. So Vodafone India consists all the plans here, but if you want to see them in categorized way, then we will click on that particular subcategory, right? So prepaid consists of some internet packs and some recharge packs. Again, these are subcategory. Let me click on internet packs. So internet pack consists only free net, triple net, right? So let, let me pick this product and add to the cart, right? So again, I, I wish to add one more product from here. This one, full talk time, right? I had added two product from prepared. I, I wish to add one product from postpaid. Let's say this one. Right. So in this, this is the basically called actors catalog, right? From where you generally used to pick some of your products as per your requirement. And there are some buttons there action button which is install product you can see here install product means it comes into the picture once we are uh, using some asset base ordering or all that so this is all together separate session and we have this cart icon where all the added product are listed here right so you can delete it remove from here you can oh i have removed okay you can add and remove, you can add again. Let's say I'm adding this particular product. Right? So in this way, you can, this card consists all of your product with, along with the pricing. And the downside, you have one close button and save button, right? You can save this, the product selection here, right? And you can close this uh, catalog, right? Completely. So these are some actions. This is the global search here. Let's say you have 200 plus product or 300 plus product you just you just go and search here right search in all products right like this free internet right so in this way you can add sing, same product two times right i want to add add another right so in this way you can pick your product from uh, this catalog and this catalog we have defined in categories, if you remember, right? And in our previous slide. Okay, now this is a button is go to pricing. This go to pricing button basically land us onto the cart on Aptos cart. Let me click on this. 
okay so there are lots of columns lots of rows and some buttons are there let me explain one by one so this add more product this is a link to go back to the your code proposal if you want to edit it this add more products make you enable to add some more product if you want to add if you wish uh, to add some more product you can go back to the catalog and pick the products from there right so this install product again uh, this install product basically load the product from asset base which are already sold out to that particular customer and all the assets are under their account right so you can load the products from there from asset base right so right now we are going to load from there and you have some columns here right first one is for product this that is showing the pricing uh, pricing as uh, pricing type as well for this <coughs> charge type sorry free net triple line and all the products this is the base price that you have defined second one we have defined the system right the third one is the price type so price type if showing the recurring either it is recurring product or not yes this is free net triple line so if it is if you are paying for this product for every month then it would be recurring right as we are defining system one time products are those products for which you have to pay only once right so that kind of uh, uh, price is uh, one time and recurring and one time hope you got the ideas about this the third column is that quantity simple if you want to change the quantity you can change yes put the numbers here change the numbers here and just hit the reprice button it will impact the complete row the complete pricing based on this quantity right so this four six you have changed the uh, change the quantity the pricing has been changed as per the calculations right so the third one fourth one is the selling term for how many months you are going to sell this particular service if it is recurring that will show you the 12 if it is one time it will show you one you are only selling once that's it and if it is recurring it is if it is recurring then it is showing that how many times it would it will occur right it will reoccur then how many times you have to pay triple nine amount to the provider right so selling time defines such kind of things the extended price is basically these extended price adjusted price basically calculations like uh, quantity and the base price and the selling terms kind of right base price multiplied by quantity and selling term right in this way you can calculate the things right the fourth one is the adjusted fourth one is adjustment type if you want to apply some discount over here you can right so if there is a diwali offer you can this you can apply flat 50 percent discount on it right let me try yes it works so so 50 percent discount has been applied initially it was 47952 now 50 percent is there so in this way you can define different kind of adjustment uplift markup base price override price factor and all that right so this is the adjustment type you can apply here then the net price comes into the picture then after applying all the adjustment and all the things your net price get calculated right so this uh, product section basically shows you the line item section show you the complete uh, picture of the your line items that what kind of this what kind of discount is going on and what is the pricing is going on for that particular product right okay so the next thing is that this is the total section the defining the totals of these products so if you see here the vodafone india it is showing some monthly base the standard this is categorized based on charge types right so this is doing this is doing some your uh, roll ups for your uh, price uh, pricing for these particular products that you have entered or selected in your cart right so the total monthly total will be 44352 and the one time will be this the to grand total will be will be in bottom right and the total adjustment that you have right 39.2 right the aggregate one right so in this way you can apply your adjustment you can 
define the pricing or you can override the pricing right a lot of stuff are there to do and then finally you can hit your finalize button okay i have changed the price let me refresh this right so in this way you can define uh, the pricing discount and all that then you have to make it finalize yes i'm done with this all the kind of adjustment now i need to finalize this once you finalize your cart your proposal line item will get generated okay let's wait okay hmm. so these are your proposal line items which are under this proposal you have product pricing and all the information here right and uh, okay you have to write some customized trigger let's say this will require some approval right so now you have created your code properly and you have you have seen that yeah line items are there each line items i need to change the layout for this there are lots of information on this particular proposal line item so this is the basic information that we know that we need to show to the customer basically what the quantity selling term net price the line item status is equal to new so you are creating the new code and this will be new uh, this will be new otherwise if you are amending or uh, you are creating the code from asset base so it will change accordingly right like renew or amend something then if you want to you want to get approval for this propo uh, proposal you can get let's say you have get the approvals it's approved right and you want to see the preview how it looks like on pdf file let me check okay document pdf okay let me try this Mm -hmm. some web service and point problem no issue i have some already created let me show you how it looks like okay so your uh, your proposal will look like this the board of one is selling out some of your service and these are some product that you have selected in cart the different fields and the totals right if you want add to some term condition you can add it here in this proposal right so finally proposal will be like this then you will send it out to the customer that we are selling this particular services on this particular price if customer is okay then it's fine he will accept your proposal and if it will get created it will get converted into the order right as i have shown you in slides right <coughs> okay close it okay so in this way generally its cpq cycle completes and later on we have some we have to send this particular proposal to the client and uh, some some uh, approvals it if it requires some approval then we have to if customer is not satisfied then we have to reconfigure the we have to reconfigure our cart right so if if he or she want more discount then we have to reconfigure the cart once you will accept this let me make it in one when he or she accept this it will get converted into the order so in next session we will discuss about the order and asset creation and all the steps complete flow so this is the this was the basic understanding how the cpq cycle runs in the system how you will define the product in system and how you can define the categories and set up the cards and all that right how you can go through all the flow so uh yes uh, we have pricing yeah so now back to the slides we have yes this is the till here the document generation okay yeah so uh, guys uh, this cpq cycle has been completed now we can take the questions 
so some of uh, some of you guys have raised hands in between and asked some question so rade what you can do is you can go through the chat window and maybe scroll all the way up and start answering questions one by one okay okay yeah yeah i got it okay let me start from how much do we need to pay okay chiragularity asking how much do we need to pay so for this uh, if you are going to on app exchange then you, you there is a way to contact to after support team so the pricing generally used to change right so it's it actors is uh, in demand you can understand so sometimes charge high and uh, sometimes charge low based on your uh, the product because there are lots of product from actors this is cpq clm and your billing management revenue management so you can contact to them directly you can they will uh, guide you on this right so the next question is do i expect this recording is available after the session if yes uh yes share to this uh, atul yes this recording will be available right yes it will be uploaded to youtube guys and i'll make sure that i send out uh, an emailer via the new delhi salesforce developer group so if you are part of the developer group and your email notifications are on you will get the email and the recording great some examples related to price rule sets what is difference between a product bundle and product option yes guys uh, the product bundle and product option basically the bundle is basically based uh, this is, uh, this is defined at the product level right let's say you are selling your cricket kit and you have to define the bundle right it will be named as cricket kit then thereafter there there will be some options under it right some product you can have, you can define those as option and add under that particular bundle and again you are asking that product options okay when you are defining your categories right then you have to define some kind of option groups the bundle is kind of option it can be kind of option in that particular uh, option group right this will be a product option is there in category hierarchy right so these are uh, altogether separate two things one you are defining a product level second is you are defining in the category level right rupees bhatia okay so please use hashtag okay rupees product bundle collection of option yes great hi friend how to record this please? okay it will be great chirag you have answered lot of questions at catalog level can we customize product after selection yes so radhi if uh, there are questions that people have answered among themselves then also you can go ahead and uh, give your own take if you want to yeah 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 i'm i'm just going through so uh yogesh so yogesh could you please uh, repeat this at catalog level can we customize products after selection what do you mean by that so uh, at catalog level once you had added the products uh, mm -hmm. that was kind of multi line data uh, was there so mostly you were saying the pricing attributes there but mm -hmm. if let's say there are several attributes in one product like uh, um uh, class of service and several other mm -hmm. bit list and all those attributes mm -hmm. so at catalog level uh, is that possible to con i mean reconfigure them yes we can so what generally happens uh, you define the attribute at product level itself uh, product attributes are there you will define you will provide the you will define the values for that once you are configuring your uh, products and you are on the catalog level right you can you can choose your particular uh, attributes that you have associated with that particular uh, product right so let's say for a simpler example you have uh, one mobile phone you have mobile phone you are going to purchase there is a some screen size rams and uh, the pricing right so you can choose as per your convenience right so based on your attribute selection your pricing will be reflected in the card right yeah yeah <clears throat> thanks yogesh 
So, Chirag, any other, any other way to open one product than this line editor in case we have several attributes? Okay. I think at the product itself, that was uh, displayed as a hyperlink, right? So if, uh, if we click on that, so will it uh, open uh, all the attributes, everything in a new window or uh, just in single page? Yes, if you have associated any attribute groups, uh, yes. On the product detail page, you have the list of all the attributes which are associated. If you are not able to see, just go into the page layout and drop down the proper uh, related list. You will see all the attributes, right? And from there, you can make the changes, right? On the product level. And if you are going to configure inside- uh, I, uh, I'm not sure. Does, does it uh, use some standard visual for space? Because in other CPQ products I have seen, they do not provide any, I mean, the template is fine. We can add uh, sections in the screen, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Add product configuration, but uh, we do not have that kind of flexibility to add some attributes at the, uh, some standard cells for square. Yes, we so, have. Uh, you, we have. You have to. You have to dig into the. Let me. Let me check this. Let me show you. Uh, uh, give me one sec. So there is a tab called product attribute group, right? You can define the things there, right? This is the visual force page created by Aptas. Yeah, and you can, are you able to see screen? No, okay. No, no, no. Okay, now there is a tab called product attribute group, right? So you can define the things here, you can add the attributes. So you can see that these are the attributes. These are already defined, standard attribute defined by Aptas uh, for demos kind of. Right, color is stranger line items vendor. So you can define the things here and you can then associate this particular attribute group with that particular product. For the product, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, got it, thanks. Okay, the next thing is, next question. Rupesh Kodi, uh, you can apply any rules constraints or product rules. Rupesh, uh, what are you asking uh, basically? I'm not finding, I'm not able to find your question here. Rupesh, are you there? Okay. Does so, it support? So yeah. actually he asked the question that um, what kind of rules we can apply on the basic config. So I answered that, that you can apply any rules, whether that's constraint rule or product attribute rule. Okay, okay. So, so Rupesh, uh, if you talk about the constraint rule here, these are basically the business rules. Let's say you are, let's say this is Diwali coming in and you want to sell out some, some, some products uh, with some particular products, right? You want to apply some kind of discount. You are purchasing product X, then you want to, the product Y should be automatically added in your cart on free of cost, right? So this kind of auto inclusion rule we can include. Auto exclusion rules are there, okay? So some validations rules are there. If you are picking product X, you cannot pick product Y in some, in some kind of rule we can define, right? Some replacements rules are there. Like if you are, uh, if you are selecting product X and you have selected product Y, then product X will be auto replaced with some another products. You can define the rule in this way. All this comes under the constraint rules. The terminology is constraint rules in Aptus, right? Hey, Rade, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, sorry, I, sorry, guys, I was away a bit. I'm actually checking in uh, at the airport. But thanks a lot. Uh, and this was more of a question so that everybody can know about these rules. So, thank you. So, yeah, great. You're welcome, uh, Rupes. So, does it support 
the Excel template. So for document generation, it does not support Excel template. It does, it does support only the PDF, doc, docs, and the RT every text file, right? <clears throat> Rather, will you be sharing this slide as well? Yes, we are going to share this slide. I meant about free version. Yeah, that was my question. So you mentioned in the initial, uh, when, how to get that Aptus package. So okay. you mentioned that you need to pay some fee to Aptus. So what is the, that fee we need to pay for the free version? So basically, uh, it's not in this way. Actually, it's not free. But uh, if you are using, uh, you have access of this package, then only you can install the package in dev uh, itself. Basically, you have to pay some amount if you want to basically for doing hands on in dev work as well, right? So, you can contact the, the uh, sales and marketing team from Aptos on App Exchange, right? Okay, so there is no specific fee. No, no, no. Okay, how how this going to be different from standard sales for compared to Aptos CPQ? Why customers should use Aptos CPQ? So, Prabha, this is the explanation is uh, too long so i would recommend you once you go through the some google so aptus basically handle the complex pricing and all the features aptus is putting all the things on same place like your clm cpq your billing and even your financial transaction as well so aptus enables the things to integrate the things with the financial force and handle from there and the artificial intelligence in coming into the system where you can only give your voice command, you will get, uh, you, your code will get created. So lots of things are coming in Aptus. So some basic differences we have to see after using both of the CPQs. Yes, your question is valid. Why we should go for Aptus CPQ, right? But the thing is that Aptus is handling and leading in the code to cache field, right? If you see the uh, see some uh, Twitter post from from Aptus itself, you will get to know some standard features which are not available in Salesforce CPQ, right? So for this comparison, we have to do some more R and D kind of things. We have to okay. take the yeah, we have to take some more uh, dig into the Salesforce CPQ as well, right? Sure. Yeah. How Aptus work in real time, real time uh, please describe it again. Okay, this is a real time scenario. So I think it, it will, uh, the, my last uh, explanation will, will answer this question. So in real time scenario, uh, let's say you are, uh, can I give some example? I can give some example for the live projects that I have worked with, right? So let's say you are selling out some some business uh, related to the your uh, data centers right so you are selling out your data centers and basically you are you are a big firm right and now you have to implement all your quotation and code system using one of cpq then you will go either you will go for the salesforce cpq you can choose the after cpq right so why we are using after CPU? This is a long story because Aptus already have some latest feature as well. So in that particular scenario where you have some data center business, you have to sign some contract as well, right? So CLM is there provided by Aptus. Then you have to, you have to the complete CPU flow will run. Then you have to manage the agreements. CLM will manage that. Then again, you need certain approvals. So for that, Aptus. Uh, advance approval is there for that and this 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 kind make uh, the things easier for the if we relate to the uh, real time scenario so this is the real, real time project that i have worked on and i have find out there that uh, yes aptus is carrying out the things in very easier manner right so the different the customer based pricing the different level of complex pricing you don't need to write every time the customization and the apex classes visual for pages everything is manageable in aptus point and click so so it is very rare that we need to do this customization right so in this way we this carried out the projects projects or uh, the implementation of that business requirement very easily right so this was a question from 
विशाल गंगवार कैन वी सेटअप मल्टी लेवल ऑफ अप्रूवल ऑन प्रपोजल हाउ डेविएशन कैन बी हैंडल इन एप्टर्स सो मल्टी लेवल ऑफ अप्रूवल ऑन प्रपोजल यू आर सेंग दैट द you are talking about standard sales force approval yeah for example uh, let's say i am creating a proposal right i'm mm -hmm. not talking about any software xyz so for example if i'm creating a proposal and let's say proposal value is let's say 50000 us dollars mm -hmm. so maybe it will go to one level of approval maybe if my proposal cost is uh, let's say uh half a million dollar right so maybe it will go to two or three levels of approval there would be certain cases where can be deviation would be there right i have a good good relationship with the customer so i would like to put some upfront discounting to a customer so how all these stuff can be handled however i have a standard processes are in place in the system okay so for for that i uh, it will be good you can go for the advance approval that is line level approval let's say you are on your cart and you 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 can see your pricing and all all the things there we can mm -hmm. customize your cart as well where you will see that where the approval is required or not in advance approval we can define the things right so okay. on you can take the approvals on line level right let's say product one you have selected in your cart then you want to take approval on that particular product right suppose i am i am selling or purchasing this particular product on this particular amount then if you if you want to require approval you can go for it so advance approval will solve this problem right so it it is basically on line levels right uh -huh. so just to add more about it so aptus they have their uh, approval packages as well so which yes. are for advance more i mean as compared to salesforce Approval. Yes, yes, yes. So Salesforce approval basically runs on particular uh, a complete record basis. If we talk about the line items, so advance approval from Aptus runs on the line runs on the line line item level as well, right? Um, no, uh, you can actually set it up uh, on product configuration or on the proposal as well. So it's not just on line item. So you can select wherever you want to put the you know, uh, the approval. So line item is one of it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, so in that case, you can yeah. So, are we uh, having a customers of uh, Aptus in the banking industry as well? So, in banking industry, so uh, so this is Prabhav, right? Yeah, correct. Okay, so Prabhav, I I need to check that. Uh, I need to check that uh, basically in deep and dig into it. So, what kind of sectors are generally using Aptus right now? Yeah. So, but but most of the top firms uh, like Facebook and lots of uh, uh, data centers uh, selling companies and uh, are using this Aptus CPU on a higher level. Even because, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, why I'm talking about the banking because banking has a is too much complex processes, right? So, for example, if they would like to send a quotation of loans or something so there would be a yeah, yeah. multiple underwriting rules happening right so there's a lot right, of underwriting right. would happen right so, so to add there uh, i would say not specifically banking but i know uh, many insurance companies are using aptus okay that's true really it's pretty same okay thanks okay great so who has answered this can i get the name yeah this is chirag Okay, thanks, Siraj, for that. No problem. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, what are the other softwares available if we don't want to use Aptus? So this is Salesforce CPQ. That is, uh, and another is Oracle CPQ, right? So Siraj, uh, yeah, Oracle CPQ, Cloud Sense. and uh, sterling one of their yeah velocity yeah great yeah likewise Thanks. yeah likewise uh, there are many crms uh, we have mm -hmm. said one of those so there are many cpq tools as well yeah yeah correct correct go there okay i think it's end of question from uh,
here and chat windows so guys if you still have some query uh, tag me on twitter right i will find out the answers and thanks chirag for the information uh, inform, information regarding the chapters using in which sectors right yeah sure i mean even i will be happy to help if you have any questions sure sure so radhe can you uh, can you run down uh, the audience with the the upcoming sessions that you have planned for the cpq okay okay so let me share with you. so next uh, upcoming sessions are uh, let me check okay so upcoming sessions are these are the complex pricing if we talk about the pricing the price matrices and some conditional based pricing pricing rule sets and all that the second is numerical expression these are kind of roll up summary fields in uh, bundles level and product level right some as attribute based configuration so attribute groups and all the things we can explain here cart different pricing fields if 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 someone is not aware about the what exactly fields means right we can discuss the fields as well it will be a little long session right understanding of after custom setting what are different custom settings that we need to define before starting with after code creation right so lot of things that we need to configure uh, i already configured the things uh, so lot of custom settings what are custom callback classes that we can uh, discuss here which are be custom callback classes being used if you need some kind of customization regarding pricing and uh, and asset line items and some customization kind of then we can write the uh, callback classes and how to use how these classes will be called from custom setting constraint rules yes uh, another informative session would be there completely uh, on this constraint rules different kind of rules x author for templates the template i have shown you for vodafone uh, the uh, it will be created using x author contract is a tool there that is handling clm contracts and uh, cpq templates both asset base ordering this is uh, asset uh, how the system uh, how the assets get created in system how we can order the uh, new code based on previously installed assets or previously ordered uh, product that uh, customer is using right and the renewals amendment all the things comes under it so these are upcoming sessions we can plan uh, accordingly as per the yes guys so these are these are some of the sessions that we have planned for the upcoming months so just stay tuned um ask your friends or your colleagues to join the new delhi salesforce developer group make sure your notifications are on so that any information that goes out from from the group via email to you guys uh, you don't miss on miss out on that uh, i also try to make sure that everything is uh, also available on twitter specifically on twitter and then so other social media channels as well so that the word is uh, pretty much out that we are having this session uh, uh, radhi can you go on with the other slides Okay. So right. This was... So, guys, so you you want to reach out to uh, Radhe? You can reach out uh, uh, to him via his Twitter handle uh, r underscore sham underscore sfdc, and you can also check out uh, some of the articles that he have posted on Let's Aptus dot com. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Um, yeah so guys uh, this is uh, all the information about the new delhi sfdc dug so you've got the twitter handle you've got the hashtag you've got the meetup group and we have got, we are also available on the success community uh, there's one emailer i'll i'm going to be sending out guys pretty soon where i'll be asking you guys to get on to the success community because that's a very good channel where we can continue our conversations about all these sessions we can have uh, one hashtag for all these uh, one each each and every of these sessions and we can continue our discussion there so that is definitely there uh, that we are going to be doing uh, radhik can you go on with the slide is that it all right so guys that's it uh, for uh, us atul yes. uh, this side is mother uh, yeah mother so uh, yeah hi guys and uh, one more question i want to add here uh we will be uh, like uh, spreading one um, one form okay if you guys are interested to give your any session in salesforce saturday online and offline okay so you guys can reach out to us and you can fill your information and topic informations and everything 
okay so uh, and it is doesn't matter like in which city you are like uh, if you are in delhi so then atul will take care if it's bangalore uh, me will take care if mumbai like so we have the all the silver saturday groups also okay so uh, please fill out your information where are you are in all over the world we will find out the people and then you can give your sessions there so that will be help to us and help to other peoples to enhance their skills and it will help to you guys to present uh, your topics and all i am right atul exactly madan you are absolutely right and guys i'll be up making sure that this session is uploaded on youtube and it's uh, the slides are also uploaded on slide share and shared with all of you guys yeah great okay thank you radhe thank you for this awesome session uh, guys will be back with another session uh, on 28th october we have got the global sales force uh, saturday meet up uh, planned up so it's going to be happening in uh, in at least uh, four to five cities all across india uh, new delhi is definitely going to be there so if you are in new delhi uh just uh, so the venue is still to be decided i'm going to be sending out an email by the starting of next week and you can just uh, hop on to that venue just come to that venue and we'll be connecting with at least uh 20 to 25 uh, different sales for saturday saturday groups from all over the world time zone is definitely an issue but we are going to try to hold that session in an overlapping time zone so that we can interact with other people as well the whole format of the session is going to be a trailhead challenge so every group is going to do a trailhead uh, and then we are going to be going ahead and comparing which group uh, or which city did the most trailhead badges and uh, yeah we are going to come up with uh, with the winners from from that so bring your laptops uh, bring your uh, you know uh, the the way that you want to work uh, bring your chargers all those kind of things it's going to be at least a 2 to 3 hours of session so it's going to be pretty much like a race for trailhead that we do but yeah it's going to be on a global level so i hope okay, to see good. all of you uh, on 28th october again when you will be decided and the timings and the venue will be uh, shared with you guys pretty soon all right and guys this this will be happening in bangalore as well okay and mumbai uh, we will uh, uh, announce soon okay but uh, yeah i'm sure about the new delhi and bangalore that will be happen so we will share the venue as well as as soon as possible definitely all right guys all right thank you madan thank you radhe thank you for joining this session guys uh, we'll be back with uh, another awesome session from radhe or uh, some other some other person who has got some great knowledge to share with us all okay. thank you Thank you everyone yeah. for joining. Yeah. Thank you thank you Radhe thank you thank you so much. Thanks bye bye.